Are you always serving you? Only doing things that make you happy? Rarely ever doing things other people want? Rarely ever choosing things that will make others happy? Always thinking about yourself and your life? Self-absorbed and self-focused. Paul is about to break it down and he's about to give us a hard pill to swallow, but a good pill to swallow that is gonna make us look more like Jesus. All right, check in. So he starts off with a rhetorical question. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort, any participation in the spirit, any affection, so obviously there has to be some, there has to be one drop amongst you. I mean, you're believers. So what he's really saying is like, this is for you, this is for everybody. Pay attention to what I'm saying and do what I say. He says, to complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Really right here, he's painting a picture of unity. Everyone coming together and having the same mind, being of the same accord, having the same love for one another. Um, so the church and people, just you as a believer, are you someone who brings unity to the people around you, to your work, to your job, to your church, to your group, to your school, whatever? And if not, we're about to, we're about to look at that too. So he starts by saying, here's how practically you can do this. He never just leaves us hanging. He's like, hey, be unified. And don't worry, I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So do nothing from selfish, ambition or conceit nothing that's a really big standard literally nothing that you say think act or neglect to do should be from selfish ambition which is what selfish ambition it's whenever you have a goal and you are going to do anything it takes gossip cry manipulate lie steal cheat just cut people off be rude anything that isn't like christ to get what you want um or don't be conceited just in general, being obsessed with you. If you are a person that is constantly offended, you deserve the best, you deserve it all. No one should ever impose on your life or your happiness or your perfect bubble. That is self-focus and that is conceit and that is not going to bring about unity. He's saying, put these things off but instead, because anytime scripture says to put off sin, it's going to tell us what to put on. We have to replace it. Humility. But in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Now, what does it look like to count others more significant than us? That's the opposite of everything we just said. It's taking into account what other people need, what other people want, serving others when it's hard, showing up when you don't want to, keeping your promises, seeing people as valuable because they are made in the image of God. Um, I like how he's about to clarify though, right? So that we don't get a wrong impression of what it means to serve others with their life. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. So what he's not saying is live a life completely abandoned of anything that you need. Like, oh, my, my friend really needs me to help them move. I need to take off an entire week of work. And I'm not gonna be able to pay my light bill or put any food in my kids' mouths. But he's saying look also to the interests of others. So it's not neglecting you in it because that would be ungodly. Like there is a godly way to take care of ourselves that's not conceit. Because he says, look to your own interest and also to the interests of others. So there's a wisdom that goes um, along with being humble and serving others. And there's a fine balance in it, but it is also very sacrificial. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So he's actually speaking backwards. So when he says, have this mind among yourself, it's talking to everything we just said here. This is the mind that we should have. No selfish ambition, no conceit, all humility, count others more significant than you, and look to your own interests in a healthy biblical way, and also continue to look for others' interests. Um, which is yours in Christ Jesus? You will only have this mind this mind is yours because of Christ Jesus. This is not the mind of an unbeliever. This is not the mind of somebody who isn't in Christ. This is the mind of somebody who has a new spirit, who the spirit is renewing, who is being sanctified. 
and who Christ is their example. And he's about to show us and remind us of what example that was. Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. God has, Jesus is God, okay? If you don't believe that Jesus is God and he's just some nice dude, that ain't the gospel. Jesus is God. He's the second person of the Trinity. What it's saying here is that him not counting equality with God as a thing to be grasped, he chose to embrace the fully man side of himself also. So he's fully God and fully man. And he chose to submit to the things that a man would submit to. Being sleepy, being tired, being heartbroken, being hungry. Like God isn't hungry. God doesn't need to sleep. But he chose while he was on this earth not to let those things, um, to, to allow those things to be a part of his life. He emptied himself. God doesn't empty himself, but Jesus, who is also fully man, did empty himself. By taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, this is what it means. So this part right here is being explained by this part right here. And being found in human form, which is what we just talked about and just explained, he humbled himself. So he's about to show us what this humility thing looks like. This is his picture to us of humility. By becoming obedient to the point of death. Take a second, okay? Jesus, who is fully God, died on a cross, which means that's a cursed way to die, scripture tells us, for you, for you who are conceited and who have selfish ambition. What? God loves you. That is crazy. God wanted to make a way for you to be saved so that we can live in this humility, which is ours in Christ Jesus. I'm getting crazy with the pencils up in here. Let me change the color. Therefore, so the word therefore means because all this just happened, because Jesus did these things, God has highly, God the Father, has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Whenever you are finding it hard to be humble, to put away this selfish ambition, to put away this conceit, to not just look to your own interests, but to count others as more significant than yourself, remember Jesus. Jesus had no reason to have to do any of that. He's God. He is self-sufficient. He doesn't need you to glorify him. He doesn't need you to be saved, but he wanted you to be. He wanted you to be able to be saved, and so he humbled himself. God, the King, the Creator, came down into his creation off of his throne and became a man who was hungry and sweaty and smelly and tired so that you can be saved. Isn't that the ultimate servanthood right here? He's a servant. Servant. So can we not put aside our sin whenever we deserve nothing and serve others and strive for this unity? We can. We should. And if you're finding it hard, whenever your boyfriend or your friend is just frustrating you and you just want to be self-absorbed or if people just keep hurting your feelings, look to Jesus, who is your perfect example of humility, and say, thank you for showing me how to be humble. I need to serve. I don't even deserve any of this, so I need to serve. But I love you guys, and I hope it was helpful. You guys are great. I love you. I hope this helps. Like, go pray. Just say, God, help me be humble. I don't want to have selfish ambition. I don't want to have conceit. I want to be humble. Help me to be like you. And you know what? He will because his Holy Spirit wants to sanctify us. So I love you guys. Um, yeah. What do you think we should talk about next? I just was really feeling this text right now, but I want to talk about the things you want to talk about and study the things you want. So subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I love you. Bye.